Okay, this is section 1.6. We're in our new classroom. We're talking about piecewise functions. Not sure why they put in the whys, but definitely there's a good reason to call it a piece function. And the reason why is because it comes in different pieces. Okay, that's why they call them uh, piece functions or piecewise functions. Uh, we're trying to understand, interpret, and graph situations that are described by piecewise functions. There's not a lot to today's le lesson, not a lot different. The only trick of today is that we're going to put limits on certain functions. So we're going to have more than one. So I'm going to explain that more in a second, but if we all know, just give us a, a very quick explanation of piecewise functions. So here's the function. What's the equation for this function? Yeah, Lennon. Very good. And this function? Yeah. Good. So here's two functions we're very familiar with. A piecewise function could include both of these functions. Okay? But we could say y equals x squared when x is less than 0 and y equals x when x is greater than and equal to 0. So what I'm saying now then is when my x values are negative, I'm going to have this function. And when my x values are positive, I'm going to have this function. Okay, you see the difference there? This is my y equals x squared graph and this is my parabola or one half of my parabola graph. Okay, and because I'm including zero here, this would be all solid and this whole function would be continuous or discontinuous? Continuous, continuous right. If, however, I had no equal sign here, if this was gone, I would have to have a circle on the zero and it would be discontinuous, okay? But that's a, a very brief, quick explanation of a piecewise fun function, okay? So two pieces, each piece having a different domain or a different boundary on the x-axis, yeah. Uh, for the x squared, mm -hmm. uh, you said where x is greater than, I mean less than zero, mm -hmm. you, can, you don't put uh, equal to? No, I, I chose not to. You could. I could have done this, and then that zero, 0 would have been included in this function. It wouldn't have changed anything, actually, right? Because when, when x is 0, y is 0 here. When x is 0, y is 0 here. So it would have been the same graph. Okay? So that's, that's a piecewise function right here. Here's maybe the simplest example. Two functions, both with, with their own uh, restrictions on the domain. The first example Who wants to read. Okay, Lennon. Representing the problem using a graphical model. Use a graphical model to represent, to represent the Actually, function. sorry, you got to go back up here, right? Okay. Learning about the map. A city parking lot uses the following rules to calculate parking fees. A flat rate of $5 for any amount of time up to the including the first hour. A flat rate of $12.50 for any amount of time over one hour and up to an including two hours. A flat rate of $13 plus $3 per hour for each hour after two hours. Okay, good. So we can see here then th this is a function that involves three different restrictions on the domain. The domain, of course, uh, being the x value, the independent value, which in this case is time. Okay, there's three restrictions here. It says up to an hour, between an hour and two hours, and after two hours. So this graph, one, two, three, there's gonna be three separate things happening between these times. Okay, so we should know that just based off the description. It says use a graphical model to represent the function for parking fees. Chose to use a table of values here. Okay, which is fine. So. These times in hours, they just made this up, okay? They chose this resolution or this number of points. So in the first hour, they chose to do four points. So zero, quarter hour, half an hour, and a full hour. And then they know based on the description, it's a flat rate of $5. Flat rate means that it doesn't change for the first hour. So their parking fee is $5, $5, and $5. Now when they go from anywhere from above an hour to two hours, it's a flat rate of $12.50. 
So again, they populate the table 1250, 1250, 1250 for everything in two hours and including two hours. And finally, for a flat rate of $13, so anything after two hours, it's $13 plus uh, $3 per hour for each hour after. Okay, so after two hours, that's where they get these values from. So 250, they're gonna times it $13 plus uh, 150. So that gives us 1450. Any questions about this table, how they made it? Okay. Next thing they did was they graphed that table. Okay. You might have been able to go straight to here, which is kind of what I would have hoped. I would have hoped that you wouldn't have had to create a table. You could have gone straight to this graph. Okay, we know it's $5 up to an hour, so we can draw a line. We know it's $12.50 between an hour and two hours, we can draw a line. And then we know that we have this final function, which is $13 plus $13 plus $3 per hour. So that means we have a slope of three, and starting from 13, okay? And these open circles and closed circles are dictated by whether it includes it or not. So the first one says, up to and including the first hour. So the $5 goes up to and it's a closed circle on the one because it includes it, okay? So then when we do the second one, it says amount of time over one hour. So it doesn't include one hour. That's why on one hour it's an open circle, okay? Only the first second after one hour is when it starts to be 12.50. Any questions about that? Finally, we'll take a look here very closely. There's a closed circle on two from the 1250 stipulation, but then there's an open circle just above it. Important to note that that open circle is also not at 1250, it's at $13, okay, as per the problem. Okay, that's why it's above. That's why they drew it like that above. Okay? Any questions there? Because the question says a flat rate of 13. So it jumps 50 cents there, just by the definition of the question, okay? So it says the domain of this piecewise function is x is greater than zero. Of course, we can't have time negative than zero, so it has to be greater than zero. And there's no final restriction on the end. Okay, so it just goes infinitely long. The function is linear over the domain, but it is discontinuous at x equals 0, 1, and 2. So at 0, there's a hole, at 1, there's a hole, and at 2, there's also a gap. Okay? For each part of the piecewise function, it's going to be described using a specific equation for the interval of the domain. Here's our definition. Piecewise function. A function defined by using two or more rules on two or more intervals. Okay, I would, I would kind of even describe this as two or more domains. You want to think of it as the dx value. As a result, the graph is made up of two or more pieces of similar or different functions. Similar or different that really don't need any of this, right? The graph is made up of two or more pieces. To say it's similar or or different is really saying nothing. Example two, represent the problem using algebraic model. Use an algebraic model to represent the function for parking fees. So you're expected to know how to do this from common sense. Okay, there's not really much I can teach you to get here other than just looking at this example and seeing how they did it. Okay, they're saying when y1 is zero, x is zero. So I don't pay anything when I don't park for any time. Okay, remember Y is our total parking fees and X is the amount of time. And that represents the open circle here. Next, I pay $5, so my Y value or my cost is $5, when my X value is greater than zero, but less than and including one. And that's from here, okay, this part of the graph. Next, I pay 12.50 when it's between greater than one, that's what that open circle is, and then less than and including two, which that 
the closed circle there. Sorry, the five dollars was over this part. This is the twelve. There's five dollars. There's the twelve fifty, and then here's above. And finally, the last one. We should recognize this to have a slope of three. But every hour we multiply it by three. That's how we get three x, and then plus thirteen because that's the rate at which it starts with. Careful here. This is not the y-intercept. Okay. It's not. We can see it's not on the y-intercept. The y-intercept of this particular line would be all the way down here, near A. Okay. But because of this restriction, it's the value at when the restriction begins. Okay. That's what that. There's a difference there. Okay. So when you go to plot this, don't draw. You know the first point at 13, and then go up from there. It's going to be wrong. Okay, you have to look at the restriction of when that comes into play. Okay, because for all intents and purposes, at x equals zero, this function does not exist. Okay, so you can't draw this line over here because it's not defined for anything less than two. All right. If x is greater than 2, then I have this function. If it's less than 2, this function does not exist. Okay, so I'd hate to see you guys get everything right, correct, and then go to draw this line and draw it up here. Any questions? All right, next one. <clears throat> so the next thing they do is they take, they take what they've written here kind of logically, and they put it into function notation. All right, so this is what I'm expecting. So this is, this is how to write. How to write piecewise functions out in function notation. This is how, what you need to understand. This is how you need to write it out. This is how you would answer a question. And this is how questions are going to be proposed to you. So the hope is that this makes just as much sense as this. Okay, that's what we're going to try and do right now and explain to you. So if y is 0, x is 0. Sorry, y is 0 when x is 0. So this, of course, f at x is y. So that's replacing our y. So when y is equal to 0, if x is equal to 0. y is equal to 5, which is here, if x is between 0 and equal and less than 1. It's the exact same thing. It's just all written down in a different way. Any questions? All right, the domain of the function is... Uh, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. We talked about that already. The function is discontinuous. We talked about that as well. How do you sketch the graph of a piecewise function? Anybody? How do we graph it? Yeah, Gennaro. Sorry, Gianluca. Yeah, exactly. So you can either, you can do a table of values if you have to and then plot it points that way and then connect the dots. Or you can just plot it as, as it is. The only thing you need to pay close attention to is if the x value is less than a, a number and not equal, it's an open circle on the boundary. If it's that number and equal, it's a closed circle. Okay, that's it. That's the only thing you have to pay attention to. Really, that's the only difference. So you graph each, each equation within their boundaries and then pay attention to whether it's an open or closed circle based on this. So this is closed circle on that particular boundary and this would be open circle. Okay? How do you create an algebraic representation of a piecewise function? Well, that's exactly what we just did, okay? That was this and this. All right, so you list the values of y, 
comma restrictions on the domain. Yeah. Sure. If you have a symbol like this or like this closed circle on that particular boundary. If this or this, it's a open circle. Right, because this is not including that point. That's why it's open. It's closed, you're saying, this point as well. Next one, graph the following piecewise function. So we know our first function very well. We can do this off the top of our head, I'm sure. Looks like this. When x is less than two, so if I go one over one up, one over three up, this point here on our graph is two, four. Shouldn't it be an open circle? Oh, yeah. Well, I just, that's just the graph. I, that's not the piecewise graph, that's just this graph, yeah. There shouldn't also be this. This shouldn't yeah, be in it, right? Yeah. So I'm just showing you. I'm just showing you y equals x squared, right now, and I'm and I'm finding out what's going on at that boundary. Okay. Next one, two x plus three. If x is equal to and greater than two. So x is equal to two. We're gonna go one, two, three. Well here, I'll just put the graph in at this point. So what they did is they took a table of values. They plugged in values for x. These are the values they chose. They found out the values of y. So there's the value that I figured out with the step pattern. And then they did the same thing for f at x equals uh, two x plus three. They plugged in values for x and they figured out values of y. Notice how they only plugged in values of x greater than or equal to 2. Okay, because that's the only time that it's, it's valid. Likewise, they only went less than 2 for f at x because there's a domain. No point in making this table 3, 4, 5 if it doesn't exist for this piecewise function. Joseph? Um, if I ask you to, yeah. If not, you can go straight to the graph. Okay? Is, you don't have a problem doing this though, right? No. I'm you understand sorry. this? Okay. Yeah, Alex? Sir, in the first example, yep. it, was, it was when you did the line graph, it was plus 13, so you started at 13. But this one, you start at 7. When you start at 7 now, like the last one, you started at 13, and it's like plus 13. Uh, I, last one, I started at 2. So here's the last one. You start at the x value of two. Right, and you sub that in. X is two. Hmm. When x is two, this should be 19. I think this graph might be wrong. Yeah, there's a mistake here. Hmm. Well, so you only have the extra dollars after uh, two hours, so you start at three hours. Yeah, I got extra three. Yeah. So it's, it's, if it's two hours plus, it's thirteen dollars flat. Then you only have the three at three hours. Oh, I see. You're saying. This only becomes one at three hours. Yeah. 
No, but at half an hour you would still add a buck fifty. Yeah, but that's just because it's going to a full hour. It's just for the graph sake that they did that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So it is actually done correct. Yeah. Yeah.